How many of you guys, by show of hands, know what micro or nano engineering even means? <laughs> okay, well, let me try and explain it to you. So clearly there's a description written on the slide. Uh, the design and analysis of micro and nanoscale systems for multi-scale use in mechanical engineering. Um, what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> it turns out that how materials or how objects may behave when they're really, really tiny uh, can be very, very different than how they behave when they're very, very large. All right, and so most of your undergraduate curriculum will be centered on understanding descriptions of how materials, how uh, objects may behave when they're large, um, but then when they get small, things may change. And so micro and nano uh, engineering specifically is focused on understanding the science of how things change at smaller scales, and then somehow you exploit that to engineer something or to make something do something different than what it would do at a large scale. Um, one simple example that I could give, and just will try to give you some of the, the underlying physics, right? If you take a macroscopic object, let's say, a, um, let's say you just have a ball of metal, right? Let's say it's a foot in diameter. If you were to count up how many of the atoms in that ball are on the surface of the ball, it's a very, very tiny fraction of the total number of atom, atoms in the ball. Right? But as you shrink it down, if you make a ball smaller and smaller, it turns out the number of atoms on the surface relative to the total number of atoms in the object gets larger and larger. And so what happens is for macroscopic objects, you're not used to surface effects or things that happens at interfaces really meaning anything because they're a minority effect. There aren't very many atoms at the surface. But when things get really, really tiny, that changes. And so the surface can actually dominate and be the dominant behavior. And so the, how the atoms behave on the surface may be distinctly different from how they behave deep inside the material. And so you may get very different behavior. All right, so just to give you some uh, understanding of where some of this interest in nano and microengineering even came from, there was a um, famous talk given by Richard Feynman um, where he talked about, uh, the, the title of the talk was There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, and so it was kind of a very visionary talk where he talked about our ability in the future, he projected what we might be able to do in the future with engineering very, very small things, and how the ability to achieve new properties, achieve new uh, um, things that we weren't able to achieve at large scales, again, some of this based on some of the simple effect, like I mentioned, just the sheer number of atoms that might be on the surface of an object versus uh, deep to inside the material. That changes so many things, and so various aspects of science that were negligible at large scales may become dominant at very, very small scales. Um, another source of inspiration in micro and nano engineering is um, Dr. Richard Smalley. He's uh, one of the people that um, discovered what's called buckyballs or some of these small carbon-based structures. So one form of carbon that we can now use is a carbon nanotube, so that's a kind of an atomic map given there on the bottom. And so this is a, um, <clears throat> a molecule that exhibits very different behavior than most other forms of carbon, right? And so it's called a nanotube because the diameter of, a, of the tube itself is on the, in the nanometer regime. And so these tubes have very, very special properties. How the atoms are arranged can change whether or not they're electrically conducting or insulating. Right, so you get to a, such a level where it's so small that just the way the atomic arrangement can have a dramatic effect on their properties. These are the kinds of things that you exploit in micro and nano engineering. Uh, another source of inspiration is uh, one of the pioneers in um, specifically nano and micro scale energy transport was uh, Professor Cheng Lan Tian. My advisor during my PhD was one of his students. Um, and so he pioneered really the study of how energy moving through materials and through objects changes as you get smaller and smaller. Okay, and so if you were to take a concentration in micro and nano, you'll learn about some of these details of how this happens and how people are able to exploit these things. Now, as I stated in the beginning, um, you know, there, you really want to do micro and nano things with the ultimate goal of affecting something at the large scale. And so uh, I'll talk about that a little bit on the next slide. But there are a number of people at Georgia Tech working on uh, technologies and um, some of the science related to things at very, very small scales. Some of them are listed here. Uh, and one, another person that is uh, often maybe not known is also um, the president of the school, Dr. Bud Peterson, also works in the micro nano area as well. All right, so one example of taking something very small has different properties and scaling it up very, very large is, uh, for example, this, this company, uh, Nanocomp, that makes these large sheets of these things that we were talking about, carbon nanotubes. So 
at, at a small scale, you can see a micrograph, you can actually see the little tubes, and these little tubes have very, very special properties, right? Um, and so their behavior can actually affect that sheet. And so that sheet of many, many tubes will have very, very special properties. And by properties, I mean you can do things with it that there is no other uh, natural material that you can do with it, okay? All right, so engineering itself is, of course, a branch of science and technology concerned with the design and building and use of engines, machines, and structures. Micro and nano really has to do with uh, doing things at really, really small scales and scaling it up to some human interface. And so in order to get this concentration, what you end up doing is really building a deeper knowledge base in the physics and the chemistry. All right. Um, so you got the math and the engineering and the rest of your curriculum, and taking this concentration will build a deeper knowledge on the physics and chemistry because, again, as you make things smaller, you start to have to account for the granularity of materials. Right? We're used to thinking of materials or objects as a continuum. It's just a continuous object. But as it gets really tiny, you can start to actually see the granularity of the atoms the, and the granularity of the grains inside the material. And what that does is it causes them to behave very, very differently. And so you have to learn new rules and learn how to deal with that. And the engineering point is that you can actually exploit these things to make new things. All right, now from the coursework standpoint, um, to satisfy the concentration, there's 15 credits. There's the required design course, energy systems analysis. And then you can choose any of the four of these elective courses. Um, and they're relatively self-explanatory. Um, Nano-engineered energy technologies and fabrication of properties at nanoscale devices. So fabrication specifically means you're actually learning how to make nanoscale objects and devices and things. Um, then there's the two, like I said, chemistry and physics, uh, learning deeper how these things, how atoms and different molecules behave, how they interact with each other. That plays a huge role in how small things behave. Uh, then you've got micro-renewable energy systems. So again, uh, how small things can play a role in energy, microfluidics and biomems. Um, so one thing you might realize is that your cells, for example, are on the micron level. All right? So cells are very small, um, but they're not infinitesimally small. And so it's possible to actually make devices on the same order of magnitude, the same size as the cells in your body. And so with those devices, you can actually manipulate individual cells. You can move a cell from one place to another and actually study individual cells rather than having to just take a huge agglomeration of cells. Uh, so that's, that course would, would deal with some of that. Then you've got chemical engineering at nanoscale systems. So um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with catalysts and chemical reactions, but you can actually design nanoscale catalysts that are much more efficient and help uh, a chemical reaction occur much faster. Then you've got... Um, uh, nanomaterials, properties, and processing. So again, how to make them and how to analyze their properties. And you've got thin film, thin film materials. So one particular class of nano or micro materials are sheets of materials where it's large, macroscopic in two dimensions, but then it may just be really, really thin in one dimension. And so those types of materials may have special properties. And then you've got soft nano biomaterials. So these are just another class of materials that tend to behave a certain way.